Hej och välkomna till GEG Swedens monter. Vi var här i besök av mamma Tavli som här för att berätta lite grann. Och vi hälsar er hjärtligt välkommen till GEG Swedens monter idag. Jättekul att ha det här. Jag tänkte att du skulle få börja med att berätta. We'll take this in English. So. I hope everybody will listen to us. So, who are you? Could you tell us a little bit? Who are you? Where are you working? Hi, um, I'm Mama Tabi Tailani. I'm a technology integrator at Stockholm International School. I'm originally from South Africa, if you've heard by my accent. It's a little bit different. Um, I've been in Sweden for now eight years. And yes, everything has been fantastic so far. Thank you. Wow, it's so good to have you here. And why do you use Google Workspace for education? Just you don't have in many hours, but just a few short tips. Why do you use Workspace? Well, um, we use Workspace because we the students are able to collaborate easily, um, and it's easy to manage at our school. And we also a Google for Education reference tool as well. So yeah. I see, and I know that you are part of GEG Sweden too. How did you get in contact, and why are you a member of GEG? So, in 2022, I became a Google for Education innovator, and in my cohort, I met two GEG Sweden members, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about GEG Sweden, and I joined, and I really hope that more people will join and find out about it and yeah wow and please if you want to join um, you work in school and you have worked for many years and you have I guess used a lot of learning materials different ones so now you are going to tell us the magic about screencasting and I'm so looking forward to it. Oh, thank you so much. So, how would you like to find out about the bring magic back into your classroom? Well, the reality is the students are simply unengaged and are disconnected. In two years alone, we saw student engagement decrease by 20% with half of students saying that they were engaged in lessons most of the time. And what are teachers saying about this? Last year, 80% of grade four to grade 12 teachers said that they were concerned about classroom engagement, which is a reality for us. So? Hi, my name is Mama Tlavi Tlaini, Technology Integrator at Stockholm International School as well as Google for Education Certified Innovator and Trainer. And today, I'm going to show you how you can bring the magic back into your classroom using screencast in three simple ways. I hope you're ready. Now, let's talk about student voice. Student voice is something that I love and I like to encourage for my students. When we give students the voice, we give them the opportunities to become creators, collaborators, and to take ownership of their learning. And this definitely increases classroom engagement. So what does student voice look like in classrooms? You can give students student voice when you give them opportunity to create presentations. Screencast gives students opportunity to create presentations by recording directly on the Chromebook. You don't need anything extra. All you need is your Chromebook. Students in my school have used screencasts to record um, podcasts. This students were able to remove the camera and they were able to record their podcasts in English lessons, where they were doing book reviews on a book called Refugee Boy. So right now, I'm going to show you how you can use screencasts to share student voice a little video that I created a while ago. So this is taken from one of my favorite childhood books. Um, I have a three-year-old son, so I read a lot of children's books currently. 
I created uh, uh, AR presentation on we're going on a bear hunt. So, unfortunately, the sound is not playing over here, but what I'm doing is I had first recorded the story of we're going on a bear hunt. I created it and then I made a video out of it and then I used screencasts to explain my work and to explain the story because my story didn't have voice. So here I'm taking my readers on a journey and showing them how we can go on a bear hunt and using screencasts as well as another app as well. The second part and why I really love using screencasts is that as educators, we are busy. As educators, you are walking around set and you are not at school today. So what happens to the learning in the classroom? Well, if you use screencasts, students, you ensure that your students never miss a beat and the learning continues as normal. Sometimes I have a, a two-year-old son and sometimes I'm vibing. So using screencasts gives an opportunity for me to be in the lesson without really being in the lesson, sharing work with my students, and they can easily follow and continue. And learning continues. Another way to take time back is to use screencasts for, to prepare students in a flipped classroom approach. When you give students opportunity, to engage in the material before lessons start. This means that during lessons you have the time to go and uh, make sure that students understand what they have learned. If students have questions, they can also come back and ask you. you students can also stop, pause, rewind, play, and go back to some of the things and concepts that they might have missed. And you can continue delivering your lessons as normal. So. Over here, I have another example of how to use screencast. So I'm going to speak through it because I know that the sound might not work. So here goes. All right. So what I did is I used Jamboard and I recorded a science lesson. So within screencast, you have you are able to utilize pen tools, and I'm explaining how to find the velocity. What is Yes, the voltage. Um, I had actually borrowed this from a science teacher, as I'm also not a science teacher, just to show them how they can use screencasts to show and to give the flip classroom approach. This way students are engaged and students are ready to learn. My next part that I why I love screencasts is because of the accessibility. Accessibility is a major thing. As I work at an in international school, we have students from different countries where English might not be the first language. So with screencasts, screencasts gives students the accessibility where they can use translate and translate the transcripts from the recordings in their home languages, which make it easy for them to access and to understand the learning of what has been happening in the lesson. So this is just a screenshot of how you can find the transcripts. And Swedish is also in the transcript, by the way. I have seen it as well. And another cool thing is that you can also change and edit. So if your transcript reports wrong, you can also go back and you can edit it. You can also edit the titles and choose if you want the titles to be on or off. So this is a great way to make sure that all your students understand and they have the same learning as everyone else. So this is just a little video to show you how you can go back and edit each section. You can create more sections. You can mute. You can um, erase certain sections as well, and you can edit your titles. So that's how it looks in the demo. In a bit, I'm going to give a hands-on demo, and if you would like to come 
and try it out yourselves. Please come over. We have a few devices that you can come use. So please, please come. Come, give it a shot. Would you like to come try? No? Yes? <laughs> come, try. Don't be scared. So come and walk you through a Screencast 101. So as I said previously, Screencast is found on all uh, Chromebooks. Okay? You don't have to use any other app. It's easy for students to access. It's easy for you to share with your students, for your students to share with you. If you're using a Google for Education um, account and domain, all your screencasts are saved in your domain and they are also used in your Google Drive. So, I see some people might be shy to try, but I'm going to show you and give you a quick demo on how you can use screencasts and where you find screencasts. So, this is my little screencast and I click and I open and now I don't have internet. That's correct. That's what I said. While we're working on this, if you'd like to come and have a look and give it a try and see how screencasts work, please, please come through. Super. And we are back. Let's try. All right. So when you open up screencast, will get to the home page, right? The first thing we do is we go and we add and we create a new screencast. Okay. You can choose if you want to record your whole screen. You can choose if you want to record a portion of the screen. You can also choose if you want to record your face or you can just also record your voice. So. For my students, uh, we recently took off the camera and they were able to record their podcast. So, what happens is I'm going to decide to record a small section of my screen. So, here it goes. It's all that I'm recording. Thank you so much. It's so nice having an assistant. Yes. All right, then you start recording. It's on the count you down. Three, two, one, go. And you start talking and you explain. Or your students can use the pen, which is fine. Oh, oh, internet, wait again. But I hope you saw a little bit. There was a pen function. You can take the pen and you can uh, write as you are explaining and doing the work. You can also press the stop button when you are done with your screen record. Your screen record will be saved in your home button. I think I can hold one. Thank you. In your home page. You'll always find a copy of your screen recording in your Google Drive. Both people that create the screencast, if they shared it with you, as well as the person that opens up the screencast, is able to see the transcriptions and as I said previously the transcriptions you can change and translate the language to a language of your choice so I think that is it and that is screencast for you and if you have any questions please come visit us or come visit our partners yes and they would gladly show you how to use screencast and that is how you bring the magic back into your classroom Three simple ways, how to use screencast, and yes, simple, easy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mutavi. I'm so happy you share this. It's, it's really magic. And if someone out here thinks, oh, that looks very complicated, I can't do this, 
I would just say try, play around, try it. Exactly, I think so too. Simple, easy. Thank you so much. It's so good to have you here. I have a few more questions for you. You know, um, this year, this theme of um, set is about screen and the responsibility of the society. And that's a big question, and everybody's discussing it in media, in the classroom, staff room. Um, could you just give us your opinion? Well, um, my opinion on screens and screen time and how we utilize screen, I think um, it needs to be purposeful, not just a babysitting device or a I don't have anything meaningful to do. I feel that students need to be taught to be creators, content creators instead of just merely consumers. And they have a lot of times where they are just simply consuming and that doesn't do anything for them from a well-being point of view or a learning point of view. So as long as you utilize these tools and products in a way that transforms learning, then I feel you can't go wrong with these and to give the students the freedom and the opportunities to try um, and also a really big thing is to make sure that the students understand and that they are empowered to use these tools in a good way because they are the future. Yes, we have a responsibility in school, so thank you very much. <laughs>